around 10 years of Halloween every day. You just, I just, it, it all blends into the same. Like when I think about costumes, I think kind of a, a hot dog mixed with a pirate. It just turns into one costume <laughs> in my mind because there's been so many. We have a show for you today. Oh, we certainly do. I say, without any further ado, let's bring out our guest of honor. He is the hilariously funny, one of my favorite comedians, the one and only Jonathan Mangum. Ladies and gentlemen. Hello! Golf claps, golf claps, how's it going? It's good. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your program. Yay, thank you for being here. We're so excited. Yay! We are so excited. To all our viewers at home, Jonathan is actually in a theater right now. Yes. Uh, the <laughs> I got to run backstage and change. <laughs> Quick change. A couple of the sandbags <laughs> fell before we did this. We had to make sure he was safe. Safety first here at Talk Culture. But thank you so much for being on the show, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to have you here. I am, you know, I'm, I am excited to be on the show and I checked you guys out and it's awesome. And I also am just a big supporter of people that are just making shit, like just make shit. And you guys are, you know, what, a hundred interviews in and you've just been doing it and that I love it. I love it. Thank you. We're making shit. Well, no, not, right? no. <laughs> no, 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 you said it, you said the inflection is important. You're making, making shit. You're not, we're making, making shit. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, it's Sounds like, like my 9 30 routine every day. I just <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're making shit, guys. We're making it happen. So, yes. thank you hey, so guess much. what? And if you at home are feeling left out, don't worry. All of us at one point of today are making shit. It's making shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, cool. Hi, mom. Okay, so uh, I <laughs> kind of wanted to start by saying when we were doing a little bit of research, I saw that you're initially from the Charleston area. So I, I was wondering, what was the comedy scene like in Charleston? Was there a comedy scene? <laughs> uh, so I really say I'm from Alabama because I was born there and I have I have people there, as they say, but I didn't really grow up there. So I, okay. I don't know about Charleston. Other okay, than when I visit. screw it's Charleston. Awesome. Who needs it? Right? So Alabama is where I grew up. Mobile, Alabama. Um, all grade school and high school was there. Um, I think there was one comedy club and I, I wasn't even into comedy until college. So like, I have no idea if there's even a, a club still there in, in Mobile, Alabama, maybe, maybe it's, it's whenever I hear, hear Mobile, Alabama, I feel like I have to say it like Forrest Gump, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just, <laughs> I don't know. The cool thing about Mobile. Mobile is people don't know this is, and, and I, people hate it when I tell them this, but I, I do because I'm from there and I'm proud. Uh, Mardi Gras started in Mobile before it got to New Orleans because the French were actually in Alabama before they made their way over to Louisiana. And so the first Mardi Gras was in Mobile, Alabama. Wow. Okay. History. A little yeah. bit of history. I, I have yet to go to a Mardi Gras. Do you recommend? Yes. All Mardi Gras. They're great. It's fun. It's just, it's another excuse to get drunk, but you get to dress up and people throw stuff at you. Oh, so in New <laughs> Orleans, they throw, they throw beads and, 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 and little doubloons, which are like little coins and the New Orleans, but in, in Mobile and, and Pensacola too, they throw candy. So it's almost like an equal mm. as a kid, it's an equal load of candy as Halloween um, from Mardi Gras. So it's a big deal for kids. So you get pelted with candy. That sounds yes. painful. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> I'm, it is. I'm, I feel like maybe I've been to one at like Universal Studios, but does that, is that count? No. We, no. no, okay. no that's like being, it's like saying Charles. you were in an earthquake because you went to the earthquake <laughs> yeah, attraction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I've been to Mexico. I went to Pico. I went to Pollo Loco yesterday. I have seen (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Darn. All right. Well, there goes Epcot. There go. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. (laughs) Marty Mobile, Alabama. What a what a place, right? Uh, Yeah. When you when you mentioned Forrest Gump coming from out there, I think a lot of my my family on my mom's side is from Georgia and from Alabama out there too. And there's a, there's a distinct smell to the air out there in those Southern States. You know what I mean? And how would you describe like the scent of Mobile, Alabama? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) it's like wet cement and cigarettes. He's like, (laughs) we're all making shit. So there was some, (laughs) there was a paper mill in Mobile, Scott paper company. And, And when that stack would, kick off why ever smoke comes out of making paper i don't know the process but that would smell not good see plus just the the it's so humid it's like it's you so just walk humid. outside and your armpits are always and it's just like rotted food and it's, it's, it's <laughs> not it, you know it's not the greatest smells <laughs> of places like this. but i do love it i love going back 
How would you rate oh. the smell of Mobile to LA? Where where, where do we land? Mm. Oh man, it depends on what part of LA. Uh, oh. Downtown is just all urine everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> the valley oh, good, is it's, like, it's like a it should, should be like one of those things you hang from a uh, uh, yeah. a car rearview mirror. It'd be like underpass Los Angeles yeah. underpass scent. It was just like <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I do like to hike sometimes. And when I go hiking and I get up in like the San Bernardino Mountains or some, you know, the, the, it smells great because then it's just like smells like nature. Like Big Bear smells like that too. It's just like fresh grass and trees yeah. and springs of water. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> How do we get on this? But yeah, awesome. Okay. Jonathan, <laughs> outside of comedy, being a comedian, what kind of fandoms helped shape you when you were growing up in Mobile, Alabama to become this person you are? What What was your stuff when you were growing I up? Guess, gosh, I guess growing up, because I didn't want to do comedy, but I did love science and stuff. So I think Doctor Who used to play on the uh, PBS, right? And so I got exposed to Doctor Who every day after school. And then Star Trek also started happening mm -hmm. uh, in syndication. So between those two shows, I was just like, this is the greatest. Of, uh, it's all. I didn't care about Saturday morning cartoons. I just okay. wanted to watch Doctor Who and Star Trek. Okay. Um, Who's I your doctor? Mm -hmm. Tom Baker. The, the, he, he was the last doctor. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. That is, listen, That that's great. Um. I, I feel like Josh and I, we, we do our fair share of conventions and we've mm. been really blessed to meet a lot of doctor doctors, both from the show and just regular medical doctors as well, but oh. also a lot of companions and uh, like Catherine Tate was at a convention mm -hmm. recently too. I mean, yeah, they're, they're all really wonderful people. As a kid, um, I'm, I'm, I'm can't remember her name, but Mary Jane, who was John Pertwee and Tom Baker's uh, uh, companion, what was her name? Mary Jane. I don't remember her real name, but she came to Mobile for a Doctor Who convention. And now knowing how, you know, what Mobile is looked at, like from the rest of the world, I'm like, man, how, why did she agree to that? I mean, I just, I thought it was awesome that I got to meet her, but it was like, she must have been like, where am I going today? Oh, uh, Mobile, Alabama. Oh, God. We don't need any gas. No, we're not going to the mobile. Uh, we're going to Mobile. Where it's mobile. not an Exxon. It's not. <laughs> well, I, I do believe that you had tweeted that Star Trek is better than Star Wars, which, yeah. listen, I respect that. Uh, putting it out there um, and maybe giving away a bit of my personal life. When I got married, I kept my maiden name, which is Riker, because of <laughs> really? my love. Really? Oh yeah, because well, so of my you are a Riker. Star Trek. Right. I'm I'm Captain Commander, whatever. So uh And to your husband, you'll always be number one. I, I better be. I better be number one. So <laughs> is there a, a <laughs> is there a Star Trek character that you most identified with? Do you have a favorite? Uh I mean, obviously there's a lot of Star Treks. Yeah, I mean, in the same way, because a lot of a lot of everyone's favorite whatever has to do with the age they were when they were, you know, going through becoming a man or or a woman or whatever. And it's like that kind of sticks with you. So of course it's it's cliche, but Captain Kirk, of course, was so awesome and i got to meet william shatner and um uh, he follows me on twitter <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's it popped going... up on my phone it popped up on my phone like william shatner follows you like, <laughs> what what oh my god um and they're sending him to space next week yeah he's going 90 he, years old going to space yeah. he's gonna yeah. boldly go where no man has gone before i'm yeah, proud yeah. of shatner for that he's I like i'm it. living it this is fucking method he said yeah <laughs> I, I like I don't dislike Star Wars, but I like Star Trek because it's more about an open frontier to me than Star Wars was. And so there's more mystery. Like Star Wars is like, here's the universe, here's all the planets, here's the fighting factions, here's who hates who, here's why, here's what's that. It's like, yeah, yeah. Star Trek's like, who knows what's over there, guys? Let's go check it out. And that to me is just more uh, interesting. Fair That's enough. That's a good point. Yeah. Star Trek does like it was, and it was episodic too, so they could they could branch out further, you know, and you could you had more freedom in kind of telling the stories, especially recently. Star Wars has really been pigeonholed into a certain kind of thing. They need to fit it to to sell toys, and it's yep. like we used to not know you're making movies to sell toys. Now we know you're making movies to sell. Oh toys. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. The the next convention I'm doing, I mean Shatner returning from space. Ho hope hopefully they have William Shatner, George Decay, and Walter. Uh, I can never pronounce his last name. When, when I met him, yeah, when I met him, I said, "Can you help me with your pronunciation of your name?" And he said, "Walter." So I'm... <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you my story about sitting next to him on the plane one time? 
No. We were going to a convention and this is this makes me sound like such an asshole, but I'm okay with that because that's, that's what we do. So we're I'm sitting next to Walter Kronig and I sit next to him and I think, who is this? <laughs> who is this decrepit man next to me? Is what I thought because he looked very tired and he was very oh. elderly and he had a hat that's pulled elderly. on and he looked tired and like he was withdrawn. And then I realized later, oh, it's because he was trying to be trying to avoid the spotlight. But then we start talking and he opens up to me. He's this wonderful gentleman. He was super warm and he was telling me how we have bed bugs. Yeah, we had to heat them out 105 degrees. And he's telling me how they had to cook all the bed bugs out of his thing. And I texted my dad, like, I'm sitting next to Chekhov on the plane. He was like, really? <laughs> That's so cool. And I was like, we're talking about bed bugs. I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. That is awesome. The people we meet on airplanes. But I, I guess, uh, Jonathan, uh, yeah. Jude wants to know, would you rather be a captain or a doctor? Oh, man. Um gosh you know you you you'd think that most people would right away just say captain but i i, I think that it's kind of kind of tricky i mean because a doctor can be a you know you do you mean a medical doctor or you just mean like a doctor like a phd <laughs> and some cool shit <laughs> your your choice your choice i mean like like oh uh, you uh dr theopolis you, you got, oh you don't remember buck rogers because that was of course I remember buck rogers you oh, better you? Okay. remember yeah so that was a doctor and he was a robot so um Man, I don't know. Maybe a doctor, like a doctor of physics on a spaceship would be pretty cool. So they like come to you like, hey, how come there's, how come we see each other in the multiverse and shit broke down? I'd be like, well, because you enga engaged the, the, the Belobian the device <laughs> without permission. Yes, of course. The medical jargon. I love it. Well, yeah. so quick side note. One of my friends is joining us right now. She is the wonderful Lady James. And I invited her to come join because she is also part of the Comedy Lab in Orlando. So let's welcome to the stream, my friend, James. She is fabulous. She is wonderful. What's up, oh, James? Hello. Hi, sister. What's up? It's my spooky sister, James. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi, so, Jonathan. I don't, I don't know you particularly, like, personally, but I know your brothers from SAC. Sure. Uh, Michael? And, yes, uh, Michael. And Bill, probably, yeah. yeah. Both of them. Um, I'm of that generation right after you. Very cool. Yeah. SAC Theater is a really cool theater in Orlando, Florida, if, if those of you watching don't know. And it's where I got my start and Wayne Brady got his start. And we had a we were doing all kinds of shows there uh, back in the in the 90s. And then that whole group moved out to L.A. And then uh, we were replaced by an equally talented group of uh, people. Oh, yeah, we, we came in right behind you guys. We learned from what you set up. And uh, SAC is, is what I credit for all the stuff that I'm doing now with um uh, hosting at Spooky with Kid and um, hosting events around town. And then I have my own burlesque troupe and I'm the MC of that. And that I can all attribute from learning improv and how to address an audience and a shape of Joe from, from Sac Comedy Lab. That was my college. So, yeah, me too. Yeah. I, exactly. I, I was going to UCF for University of Central Florida for a degree in psychology, but I literally was going in to take the test after reading the book, like I never went to class. And then my actual college was, I consider SAC, uh, SAC theater. Yeah. They actually have SAC university as you know, the, the classes and whatnot that we yeah. get to go through. So if anybody ever wants to do something that has to do with speaking in public or, um, you know, addressing even just a room full of people for meetings, you, the experience that you get and <clears throat> the training that you get from even just doing a simple improv class one time is immeasurable. I completely agree. And SAC is a great place to do it. So if you're in Orlando, do it. And if you're not, drive there from wherever you are. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> or teleport if you have a TARDIS. Yes. So yes. <laughs> they're better on the inside. That's, that's what they say. So uh, James and Jonathan, um, I, I just was curious if there was a moment that stood out for each of you uh, through SAC in Orlando. Oh, goodness. So many of them. Um, Jonathan, you were on Ensemble, and I hosted the Ensemble show, so I'll go ahead and take one. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was a, a single moment. I think it was just more like a thing, which was like, you know, if you want to get good at something, you just have to do it a lot. And we were lucky enough to be doing three shows on, two shows on Thursday, three shows on Friday, three shows yep. on Saturday, and two on Sunday. And they were all just about Seven, nine, and eleven. Yeah, I remember. And just doing those improv shows over and over. And we, I, I never went to parties. Every single weekend of my life was spent on that stage. Well, because um, we had parties backstage and the green room. Afterwards, yeah. But, but you know, we that, I never got to actually go to a college party because, you know, 
we were there till two in the morning backstage yeah. after, after the shows. Um, so that's, I mean, that, that's just a cool, not, I mean, even, even standups would have a hard time doing, finding three places to do a show in one night. Um, so I love that, that we were able to do that for two or three years in a row without stopping. And when I was going through it, I was um, going to classes at the same time I was volunteering. So I'd see the shows and then go to classes and learn how to play all the games and uh, all the little tips and tricks. But uh, what stands out to me the most is, <laughs> okay, but way back in the day, kid, there was a club called The Edge. And I was yes. at a concert for um, G-Love and Special Sauce. And all the SAC people were there and we'd all gone to SAC in high school because that was a cool thing to do. Cause I'm from Sanford, which is about 20 minutes down the road. SAC was a cool thing to do. It was all ages. It was just fun to hang out. And we were all theater kids. So at the concert, all the SAC people were there and we were like starstruck. I'm like, Oh my God, all the SAC people were here. Um, and it turned into some weird mosh pit, believe it or not with G love and special sauce. I don't know why. Um, and my sister and I were kind of on the way of that and Matt young, and all those guys pulled us to safety. Um, <laughs> so we weren't being thrown into this pit of crazy people as uh, young teenage kids. And um, then we went back to SAC afterwards and hung out in the green room with all these people that I looked up to so much. Um, and then, you know, years later, I'm taking classes as, as they're becoming my teachers and my mentors. So that that definitely started my journey. Um, and then, you know, become the family that SAC became. That's awesome. Well, James, I love you. I can't wait to see you in two weeks at Spooky Empire. Do you want to give a, a quick plug to Spooky before we let you go? Yeah, get for sure. Um, I got my panels today. Did you get yours? I sure did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a packed weekend. We've got so many people coming to see us, including, um, can I can I say adult words or do I have to keep it clean? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. So um, we have uh, my, my favorite and, and most exciting panel. I've been chasing it for three years now. I have Robert motherfucking England. So... <laughs> that's his new name that's his, his new name now. <laughs> uh, um so good. we're excited for everybody to come to spooky at the higher regency october 22nd through the 24th you know all the good rock and roll horror pop culture things you can think of car show tattoo show kid zone vendor room celebrity q a's uh, photo ops costume contests I mean, you really can't say enough about it and, and talk about becoming a family environment, just like Zach was. It's kind of lend itself to this to be able to hang out with all the cool people. Heck yeah. Well, James, I'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you so much again. Bye, yeah. bye Jonathan. And hey, Josh. Hey, bye. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hi. All right. Well, thank you. Jonathan, what would you would you say like UCB or like Groundlings in LA, similar to SAC? Uh, yeah, very, very similar. Um, I think... Orlando was was so uh, so far away from the real comedy world that like you know Second City in Chicago was was going and and Annoyance Theater and UCB and uh, Improv Olympic and all these things and they all had lots of industry people in and out of them but Orlando was just kind of way off in the south and we kind of were our own little thing and it wasn't as industry like you know you, you go to Groundlings so that you can get good so you can get on TV I mean that's kind yeah. of you, you're not just spending all that money just because, oh, right. I think it was kind of fun to do a sketch. No, you right. you have ambition. You're here for a reason. Yeah. Uh, but Orlando was different. It was, it was you know, we weren't, there wasn't a lot of TV going on. So it was just kind of this thing. And hardly any tourists would come. This was all locals and people from the colleges that would come. And so it was, it was unique in that it, it never felt like it was like part of the greater entertainment business. It was its own thing. And uh, that was really That's cool. That's a great point. You go to, I've been to a lot of these shows in LA and Bless the talent. Some of them are hilarious, great talent, but then some of them are just really attractive and not funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, you are just really good looking, but you are not funny. I see why you're here, but oh, yeah. Also, I mean, I, when, when I see people that aren't funny at a at an improv show, I you know, I used to just be like, well, they're not any good, and now I'm like, no, no, it's because they're they're there to get funny. Like Correct. they're failing to get good. So when I see someone fail now, I'm not as judgmental. I'm like, no, that's the process. Like you have in five to years, bomb. they'll be good. Like, that's a great yes. way to look at it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of wanted to ask, um, since we are talking about improv, I always like to know if people agree with the rule of yes and. You know, is that the biggest rule to follow? Are there any other rules? Yeah, I mean, yes and is the biggest rule, but it's also not completely like pe people some people will take it all, like religion almost, you know, and it's like, it's yes. And, and you must uh, just like, this is like, the, it is the, the golden rule and you must obey. And it's like, it's not quite that there, there are ways to 
you should always yes and someone's idea, but you don't always have to say yes and. And also, I can know what you want me to do. So, so for example, if I'm doing a scene with Wayne and he's like, you know, I'm going in, I'm going in the bedroom. Don't come in here and slams the door. If I were to yes and that, it would be okay. I won't go in there, and mm. and I'll go. But no, no, no. He's he's literally asking by telling me not to. That's the way I yes and that is to know him and actually go in because I know that's what he wants. So it's more of a uh, more of a concept as opposed to a you know a literal rule of saying yes and. That's so interesting. Like I actually haven't heard that perspective before. That's yeah. very interesting. Now, when you're teaching, when you're teaching improv, you have to start with that because people's they're just the built-in thing is people think that no is funny. Like, hey, will you come and do this? No, they just think it's going to be funny to be contrarian. So you have to, you have to train that out of them. But then once you are able to know what it is and want to say yes, and then you can kind of play with it a little bit and kind of, you know, take it not so literally. Gotcha. Huh. I like Pretty that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like very it too. cool. That's some, like that's that. some uh, expert level improv. I, I know my baseball. mind sweat blown a little bit. <laughs> Josh? Well, I, I have a little bit of history doing some improv and uh, the yes and theory for me, I uh, the way I always interpreted it was to, sometimes you can just repeat what they say. And while you're repeating what they say, it's giving you more time to think about what you're going to say. Um, the line of improv I do is giant robots because I do the Transformer show at Universal with yeah. Megatron and Optimus Prime. So <laughs> it's very different when someone uh, is in your improving as a giant robot. But the yes and like like you're just saying, Jonathan, it doesn't have to be religion, but it's more of uh, gathering. You're acknowledging what they said and you're moving on to the next. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're saying, yes, I heard you. And this is where we're going now. And exactly. Like you on expert level, like you said, if you know your your scene partner and where they're going you you can make something really magical happen yep, absolutely absolutely and it, it it is the foundation of of the improv improv is like dancing always need a good partner yeah you do jude um absolutely it's it's it, there's nothing worse than than going in this there's a whole another level of thing now where if you have a bad improv partner um then you have to switch modes to steamroll mode which is not nice and you never want to steamroll people you never want to just bury them but if if someone is next to me and they're not good, which usually happens in an audition setting, they'll bring in two people. And if someone's just not bringing it, I will just I will just crush them. Crush it, yeah. You, I'm not going down in this shit. No, no, I'm. Yeah. You can burn yourself to death. I'm yeah. going in the sky. All right, yep. you're going. Yep. Pff, I'm going up. Right. Uh, Josh, I bet you, hearing all the stuff that you do, I bet you we have a mutual friend who also went to SAC Theater in Orlando. Uh, D. Bradley Baker. You know D. Bradley. I Baker? I am in a game, and I've met Mr. Baker several times. He's yes, a wonderful. So Wonderful gentleman. Uh, I met him with the incredibly talented casting director, Andrea Toyas, yep, uh, sure. who's with Blizzard. She and Mr. Baker are always wandering around BlizzCon. And he, bless your heart, D. Bradley Baker, because he made that website. As a voice actor, a lot of oh, people yeah. get asked, how do I become a voice actor? What are the steps I need to take? And D. Bradley Baker was smart enough and created the website which you at home can go check out called i want to be a voice actor.com and it'll take you through pretty much the a to z list yeah. of things required to get into this uh coveted industry it's so amazing he and he was with us he was doing improv on stage with myself and and wayne brady and and uh, all these cats from from orlando let's um, let's show some love on d bradley the guy is incredible he can make sounds that i'm like what you know what i mean <laughs> um any video game heads for overwatch sake he's wrecking ball he's the hamster version of wrecking ball in overwatch whereas jonathan lapow is the low voice he does him and frank welker have this thing when they can just make sounds appear out of their throat and i'm like yeah. it's like it do i get goosebumps thinking about it because it's just such like it's such nostalgia gasoline from my past those two sometimes you know? he'll he'll post things like look what i have to read today and the the character description <laughs> is a a drowning baby head in burning oil and this, <laughs> <laughs> he does it he, he does it i love it sounds like a Tuesday. Bradley Baker. always wearing a nice blazer too never caught that guy without a blazer met him like molt, half a dozen times always wearing a freaking sharp blue blazer <laughs> shout out to the Ooh. blue blazer man that's awesome i'm definitely <laughs> gonna check out that website very easy to remember yes. well okay mm -hmm. jonathan I, I wanted to say and obviously we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about whose line but i don't know if you've realized but recently they've been playing like pretty much all of 
your episodes like my husband and I before we go to sleep every night we always watch a couple episodes so I think it was two nights ago we got the one where you did your strip routine um and then <laughs> well, no, you, do? don't, yeah. you took off <laughs> first you took off your blazer and then you and oh. you don't remember this yes <laughs> and I think your shoes ended up somewhere and someone yeah. threw a shoe at you and then last night I hope it's okay to mention this you fell off the stage I, yes, oh. <laughs> I did. I fell right off. And it's weird because all of those were taped years oh, ago. Right. Like none of these are new. I, we haven't had a taping in two and a half years, but um, we tape, you know, I tape about two days a year. That's it. My stuff. And they turn that into like, you know, one taping day will turn into five or six or seven episodes because they'll just keep taking pieces and putting them together. So um, I would like to do more. Um, there's a, I heard there's going to be a new season. I was like, oh, here it comes. And I was like, oh, it's just more edits of stuff they haven't put on yet. So, oh, that's interesting. Well, ho hopefully, you know, they'll get to film more stuff with you soon. The question Please. is, if the points did matter, how many would you have and what would you buy? <laughs> wow. Um, I would, um, I'd buy, I would have over 50 points and I, oh, would, wow. I would buy some, uh, Ethereum. I guess smart. Oh, I, I have several Ethereum and an NFT empire building enough. <laughs> <laughs> we can speak later about NFTs. And yeah. I'm still so confused. I I understand about 80%. I like I have the same understanding of NFTs as I do of black holes. I, I generally get <laughs> the concept and there's about 20% I'm not getting, but it's okay because I get enough to understand. M more than me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's like the, the, what what I realized recently is um where NFTs truly generate their value is the fact that it's the eth that somebody spent because it's the money that somebody originally spent. It's almost like if you were buying cryptocurrency anyway, if you were to buy twenty dollars worth of cryptocurrency. Oh look at here we go, it's going throw right over her head. Look at Heather, if you were to buy twenty dollars of cryptocurrency, you would have nothing to show for it other than the twenty dollars in your wallet. An NFT is like, hey, you bought $20 of cryptocurrency and here's a, a, a picture or something that actually represents your $20 of cryptocurrency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to put it. Um, I just am learning about the minting process and the gas fees on the Ethereum. And yeah. th there's a lot, Heather. This is, might be for another episode. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> here's, here's a pitch for you. And okay. you, can, you can take this if you think it's worthwhile because I was thinking okay. about doing it. So okay. I, there's a show that I do on YouTube as well where I have guests come on and, and make jokes. And a lot of times we have up and coming comedians. So what I was thinking about doing, and I don't know how yet, but think about this too, because you also have people that are, you know, up and coming in different levels. Turn the show, each episode into an NFT. That way, if someone's career takes off now, th there, it's an investment that's gone up because they can mm. own this thing that exists. So I, I'm, that's just something, right? Yes, that is, that's an yeah. I'm People still are starting to tie more physical rewards to these NFTs in the sense that if it's a more expensive one, uh, you would say, "Hey, whoever owns this at any reasonable point can cash out for an hour one-on-one -on -one session with me just to speak." Ooh. And once it's expired, the NFT will be, you know what I mean? You kind that's of dust smart. it almost. Um, and the the place where they're sold on Heather's is a marketplace called OpenSea. It's basically a. Uh, uh, I want to call it like the NASDAQ of kind of uh, NFTs when the floor is the lowest price and it'll statistically analyze everything and how much people are betting and blah, 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 blah. And people can bid. It gets really complicated. It is, I, I, I put it to the same as when you go to Vegas. You go to Vegas for 500 bucks and you think, I'm throwing this five hundred dollars in the trash. <laughs> you you go in there with the attitude, ah, it's gone. You know yeah. what I mean? Anything that happens, this is great. If I get a couple of drinks and a steak dinner, hey, that's great because I assumed I burned this money. And it's the same kind of with cryptocurrency and NFT. Sure. I am assuming it's gone if something happens. So you're anyway. saying there's steak? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. count me in. Yes, and <laughs> got it. Love that. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do more research because I'm pretending like I'm getting what's happening and I have no idea. Okay. So <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. Uh, well, since you did plug your show, we do have the graphic. Let's bring up the graphic. Oh, yeah. Can, bring up the graphic. <laughs> there it is. Hey, look, it's the same screen. Whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs> We've been doing like the, the letters show. live in my room. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this show now on YouTube for we're on episode 91. 
So oh. we have two comedians come on and they'll make jokes based on pictures or memes or ideas. And then we uh, have the audience come up with their own joke in the chat. Our producer pulls out the best joke. It splashes on the screen. And then the audience votes who had the best joke, comedian one, comedian two, or the, the audience member that played. So that's kind of a fun uh, show that we've been doing. We started during the quarantine and we're still still doing it because it's still fun. How clever. It's great. I've checked out a few episodes. It's really funny. You guys Thank do you. a great job. Yeah. And of course, we saw you had Richard Horowitz and Dean Cameron. Yes, so I saw them in your them. splash video. Yeah, they're, great. they're amazing. I mean, Hilarious. talk about, you know, it's like you and Wayne have something so special between the two of y'all and the two of them. Just they they really work well together. They're very funny. I loved having those guys on. Heck yeah. Any uh, upcoming guests that you can tell us about? No, because it's kind of like I, if I was smart, I would, you know, ha book it more in advance. But I'm more like, oh, oh, shit, it's Friday. Who am I going to call? Uh, get, get these guys. So I have, a, I have a guy that helps me book people. Um, but we do have uh, other programming on the same YouTube on the same YouTube channel on the UJokes YouTube channel. We have uh, one show called uh, F Mary Kill Champions. I enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my friend Carolyn Page from from College Humor and Dropout TV, and she uh, has comedians on, and they just get random pictures. Who would you rather F marry or kill? Um, so it gets pretty. Uh, it's a little dirtier than UJokes, but it's it's super funny. And then on Fridays we have a show called High Joke Score, where I just prompt you, the audience with things like you know what's the dumbest name for a pirate ship. And then you type it in, and then every week there's like a uh, top ten scoreboard, like you see in an arcade game, and the winner gets twenty five bucks uh, in in money cash. Wow! So oh. not crypto. Okay, not, that's not crypto. Okay, no, that's so neat. dollars. Yeah, I love those. Yay! Yeah, that's very neat. I mean, I, I always like seeing all these projects that came out of the craziness. And yeah. uh, I, I think this is just such a neat concept. I really enjoy it. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. It's it's fun. And hopefully it'll be on TV someday. We're kind of getting <gasps> our pitch decks together. That's the whole kind of purpose of the channel is to like try stuff out, tweak it, and then get it in a pitch deck and take it to production companies and see if it can be made for TV. So that's that's the goal ultimately. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Circling great. back to yeah, what you said earlier about creating content. These There's so many platforms now that are crazy amounts of content whether you're it's netflix or amazon prime or pluto tv is another one that's blowing up uh where there's yeah. tons of internet channels on there that are just that has a huge audience it's like worldwide you because yeah. it's all internet based you know i think that that's yeah. going to be the future it's i think it's gonna be funny we have all these streaming services now and we came from cable, which was a bunch of, you know, channels put together. And in the future, there's going to be like a streaming services. Like we have all your streaming services here. I'm like, oh, so it's like cable again. We're just going to go a complete full circle all the way around. Yeah. Or even more to the future. And the AI will predict exactly what you want to watch with exactly the kind of characters. And it will create it on the spot quantumly. And then you'll watch the perfect show just for you uh, I, every time. That I hope so. Yeah, because that's the biggest share, thing. You can't share it because it, no, everyone has a different show. So you won't be able to, did wow. you see on the, so there'll be none It'd be like that. cerebral. That's that's yeah. a crazy theory. That's a crazy Can they also concept. help me like where I want to eat dinner? Because that's the other big thing. I don't know yes. what to do. Yes, you and eat. everyone else in America. <laughs> My <know>. God. <laughs> don't ever. It's like, that's the two things you never ask your wife. Where do you want to go eat dinner? And you tell and you never say, hey, honey, you should calm down. Those are two <laughs> things that you should never. <laughs> I think you should calm down. I'm where calm. do you want to eat? <laughs> 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 well works okay. every time what are you talking yep. about fair enough oh, i like now i'm thinking about the future oh that's so spacey okay so a couple more questions before we get into our game with you jonathan Ooh. so uh we wanted to know uh what's been your favorite audience costume and what would be your ultimate big deal so i have an answer it's not exactly to your question um that's, that's the okay. number one question that that i get about let's make a deal what's i'm been sure the craziest costume mm -hmm. and if you can imagine, we, so we've done, I think we're close to 2,500 one-hour episodes of Let's Make a it's Deal. A lot. So that's like, I mean, that's, so how many times does 365 go into 25? Let's see, almost 10. Math. Okay. So that would be 10, around 10 years of Halloween every day. You just, I just, it, it all blends into the same, like when I think about costumes, I think kind of a, a hot dog mixed with a pirate. It just turns into one costume in my mind because there's been so many. None of them have really been like, oh my God, you attached a, a space shuttle to your head and how did you fit it? Like there's been nothing that's been like mind blowing because they have shuttle. to fit inside. And But yeah, I've, every every character from every show someone's dressed as every, I mean, it's just been 
everything. People have dressed it as everything. I'm trying to think of a hot dog as a pirate. Yeah. I'm thinking of where like the plank would be, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> or is it like the 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 pirate ship has the hot dog as the plank? I don't I don't know. Ooh, it could be it could be that too. Where's the parrot go? I'm confused. So, uh, okay, so Jonathan and Josh, what would you guys dress like? Oh. Well, I've been to when I was a young boy. When I was a young boy, my father took me to the city to see a marching band, and okay, he told me romance. that. Uh, <laughs> We did get to go see, um, when we were younger, we got to go see the backstage in between when they filmed Let's Make a Deal. We got to do the tour when they would take you through. Oh. And they'd have the curtains over the prizes so you couldn't see what was next. And I remember that being a big part of, like, as a child, like, oh, I didn't get to see the car or the couch set there. <laughs> so you were a but surfer. Okay, got I, it. I'd, I'd clearly be, well, you can't be anything that's, like, trademark. So I'd have to be, like, a, a Ghostbuster without, like, the Ghostbuster logo. I'd just be wearing a tan jumpsuit. They'd be like, are you a janitor? I'd be like, I'm a paranormal <laughs> investigator, buddy. Yeah. Okay. It's I a like it. <laughs> a lot of times you'll see people with stickers on for no reason. Like, why are they wearing a Let's Make a Deal sticker? It's because it's covering Nike or it's covering, you know, <laughs> yeah. different logos. Some sports logo. I know. You're that's like, smart. I think that's one of the funniest things about TV is like, how dare you? You want to show this logo that you're wearing our clothes? No, you're going to freaking pay and you're going to pay back. Like, <laughs> Oh, the, the last thing, the last TV show I just did, they had to cover my tattoos because they said my tattoos were branded. I mean, that was really? Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah. What about this beard? Are they going to say, "Oh, Ryan Durst has a beard like that"? You can't come. Gotta on. go. It's Give off. Give me a break. Yeah. No more beard. <laughs> so, okay, so Jonathan, what's your what's your? I topic? would dress as. Have you ever seen that the the stuff, the artwork that people do on sidewalks, where if you're standing at one point of view, it looks like a giant cliff. <laughs> the then if, if you walk in front of them, you see that it's oh, it's just a drawing. I would do that so that it looks like an empty chair from the camera's <laughs> point of view. <laughs> But then, but then as the camera panned over, you see, oh, there's a dude there. What's up? There's a dude. <laughs> so, like, do, do they keep trying to fill in the audience? They're like, come here, here's an open seat, and then someone sits on you? <gasps> yeah, that 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 could be exciting yeah. for me. You take a seat, <laughs> Alice, and you pretend you're a chair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's Cheap, cheapest enough. lap dance I'll ever get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's Halloween. Time to ride the broom, honey. <laughs> oh, that pirate has a hot dog. <laughs> this chair had some had some 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 sausage links on it. I don't know where it came from. This. Oh no. Oh, God. <laughs> well, Josh, <laughs> why don't you ask one more question before we go to the game? Oh man. Um. Let's let's just go with a general question. You yeah. your career has been so uh, awesome and fun. What is some of the biggest and best advice you've received from your comedian and improv friends and associates? Mm, the best advice, I would say you just have to, you have to suck a lot at everything before you get good at it. So don't, every time you, every time you fail, especially with improv, you're, you're with a group of people. So if you have a bad show, just celebrate that you failed. Like we failed, we fucking suck. Woo, we're terrible. Like, like celebrate that because it means you're going to get better. It means you're getting better. Um, it's harder for a stand-up because you don't always have someone on stage with you, but still it, sh it should apply. If, if you fail, it, it's good. It fail failure is the only path to progress. There, there's no mm. way around that. Um, and then also I used to think uh, th through the years, th there's two things that will make you successful in entertainment, I think. And then, and that is the talent and then the networking. And I always wondered about what percentages are more important. And I, more and more and more, I think that, Unfortunately, talent is a much, much smaller piece of success than than networking. And by networking, I mean your friends and people you talk to and being in people's minds and being there and doing favors for people and always just trying to be present, helpful, yes, ending people, helping out with projects, doing free shit for them whenever they ask. Like all of that, if you start in your 20s and in your 30s and 40s, by the time you know you you get older. All these people will have moved up. Some are producers, some are agents, some are writers, some are actors, and they'll all, you all want to work with each other. You all want to help each other. And so, you know, it's it's not a talent meritocracy in, in the entertainment business. It's more about that network. And and if you're a dick, it's not going to work out for you. Thank uh, you. That's why being nice is the most important yes. thing. Yes. Yep. That's, that's a short way of saying be nice. Or yeah. is, um, um, 
uh, what's his name? I'm what's what's, what's Wesley Crusher's uh, real name? Oh, oh, you're talking Will about Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Wheaton. Oh, sorry, Will, if you're watching, <laughs> I know Will just spaced his name. Um, you know, he's like, don't be a dick, and that that is a just a great piece of advice. Don't oh, yeah. be a dick. That's so true. Put that on my tombstone. Don't be a dick. Uh, be a dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Will Wheaton, also one of my favorite my favorite people of all time. He's Fiction. so nice. Fiction. He does improv and, and comedy. We, we met, he was doing a comedy at the Acme theater here in um, Los Angeles. That's awesome. I want to see a, a death match with Will Wheaton and Matt Mercer in like a Dungeons and <laughs> <Yeah>. Dragons. <death laughs> match. Wesley Crusher versus Matt Mercer. <laughs> I like How that. do we set that up? How do I buy that NFT? Okay. So Jonathan, we have a game we're going to play. This is the game right. of would you rather, obviously there's no wrong answers. So yeah, you know how would you rather work. So, Josh, you want to read the first one? Oh, absolutely. Jonathan, okay. would you rather compete with Wayne Brady on The Amazing Race or compete with Wayne Brady on Nailed It? I would. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't understand the game. Uh, man, you know, I think The Amazing Race would probably be uh, one because it's on CBS. Uh, um uh. But also, I, I love the, the traveling and, and the clues and all that kinds of stuff. Nailed it. Um, I don't even know what that is. Is that a cooking show? It's a cooking show on Netflix hosted by the fantastic Nicole Byer. Oh, and okay. basically, they show you what you're supposed to create. And you oh. have a certain amount of time to create it. And it is always bad like real bad <laughs> of course like of forget course the eggs is. and the cake bad so oh but it's so funny it's hilarious it sounds so. hilarious but no i'm I, so i'm very competitive uh and so is wayne i think we would both if you asked him what he'd rather do i think we'd both pick amazing race okay something i would like okay. to see on cbs yes okay. make it happen cbs yeah. new season starts october 14th on cbs <laughs> I know, right? that's like next week <laughs> All right. Here's you can catch Let's one. Make a Deal at 9 a.m. with CBS. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Next one. Would you rather? Yes. Oh, be a Klingon or be a Ferengi? Klingon. Easy. Okay. Easy. Not, no hesitation. I love it. Wow. Okay. Just, uh, I mean, they have, I, I know Ferengis have a language, but you know, no one cares about the Ferengi language. You, you know, no. if you're going to learn some weird Star Trek language, you're, learn, you're learning Klingon. Um, you could true. sing the Klingon operas. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Ferengis, I mean, they, they were, I mean, what they kind of created to be unlikable, wasn't that, wasn't that kind of the intent? I guess. I, I don't know. I guess like I'm, I just like some of the actors that have played Ferengis. Oh, the actors so. are great. The actors yeah. are amazing. Armin Schwimmerman. Yeah. Uh, Armin Schwimmerman. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Schwimmerman, excuse me. Wallace Shawn, right? Wasn't, wasn't Wallace Shawn a Ferengis too? And I know we who just was, had Lee Ehrenberg. Who played his cha his son, Quark's son, uh, brain fart but he was awesome too yeah so. okay. <laughs> but do, do you speak any klingon jonathan i don't i mean i've like read stuff in klingon and trans translated to see what it means and and so but i don't i don't I can't actively speak any unfortunately okay that's fair that's the next question no all right here we go Josh, ready? <laughs> all right uh would you rather go back in time and do improv with jerry lewis what a great picture there uh, or would you <laughs> go back in time and do improv with one of my personal favorites, the legend Carol Burnett. <laughs> it's funny because you 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 were selling Carol Burnett real hard, but you didn't have to. Uh, <laughs> Carol Burnett, obviously. Uh, Jerry Lewis. I mean, he he's he he is a complicated person. I don't quite know that it would be that fun. Where I do know yeah, it would right. be really fun with Carol Burnett. Um, just watching the. Uh, Gosh, her Carol Burnett show and the way they would all make each other laugh and Tim Conway and her and got to work with Tim Conway, which was awesome many years ago before he passed. And that just that whole era. It's, you know, Carol Burnett is just very yes and. You can kind of just feel it in her vibe. Like she's ready to go. She'll go with any idea. She just has that that yes andy kind of energy. And Jerry Lewis is, I mean, he, he, he was funny and I've seen him do funny stuff, but it's, it's, it's a darker place, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yes. It's different. <laughs> And yeah. Jerry Lewis's humor is very uh, insulated in the fact that it's Jerry Lewis. You know what I mean? And when he shares the scene with somebody, it's the same. You know, there's color and straight. It's it's either someone's playing it straight, someone's the color, and he's yep. the color, obviously, in every in every scene. So yeah, 
Yeah, but there's also like there's there's a there's a man there's like a sadness that you can see even when he's being like super big and stupid and he's just like this guy's something something's a little something sad is happening inside. <laughs> Fair. He's a very All sad right. man. Carol Burnett it is. Great yeah. choice. Great choice. Okay. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather Ooh. <laughs> have a celebrity wrestling <laughs> match against Mark Marin or spent a night in jail with Thomas Lennon? <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, I've worked with Mark and I and I've met Thomas and I can I, I these guys are both super cool. Um I think I could probably god this is a tough one. I think I could take Mark Marin um mm -hmm. while I wrestled him he he complained <laughs> the whole time as I was beating him. Uh and Thomas Lennon just just a side this is a side thing that is I apologize for the tangent but he wrote a book with uh Ben um Oh, what's the other guy's name? Ben. I'm spacing on it. About writing screenplays, and it's the funniest and best book about writing screenplay. Uh, how to make a billion? They they together wrote um, Night at the Museum and all these big movies. And so this book on how to write screenplays is great and hilarious. And I can't remember the name, but look it up. Anyway, I'm 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 going to spend the night in jail with Thomas Lennon. That's going to be oh. yeah. Writing movies for fun and profit was that yes. what it was? It, okay, it's, absolutely. It's, it's comedy. It's like the way they weave the comedy into the how-to is great. I highly recommend it. Awesome. Heck yeah. Okay, good choice. Good yep. choice. I still want to see that wrestling match, but okay. A little half. I feel like after Mark Maron, you just leave smelling like cigarettes and sadness from the garage. <laughs> and cats. Just like and cats <laughs> but yeah i have to say glow is like one of my well also reno 911 i don't want to i love that show too but glow i'm so sad that it came to an end i had tiny parts on both of those shows yeah well hence why we picked oh duh Cause, cause oh, i'm thinking research. what a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> hey, research. It's important. all right here's the next one josh right. i think this one's you would you rather jonathan go skydiving or be driven around a racetrack, be driven around in an oh. Indy car. Wow. Um, I've been driven around in a ra in an Indy car by <laughs> Mario Andretti for a commercial. For <laughs> wow. I mean, you know, like everyone does. <laughs> we had him on the stream too, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so tell us everything. Um, you did have Mario Andretti on here. Yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. So it was a commercial for Honda and uh I don't even remember what the setup was, but the setup was a, a, a Mario Andretti wants to give a regular guy a ride around the tracks. And so we get, we go down to this racetrack in some s s Southern California somewhere. And um, they go, okay, yeah, we're going to, you're going you're gonna to be going up to about 175 and there's a camera car in front of you. So there's a, there's a camera car with a camera on it pointed at us. Also another formula one car also going like 175. So we're about three feet away from each other going 175 miles an hour with a 75 year old man driving it. And I'm in the back seat and it's, it's insane. And I'm just like, man, one little slip up and this, this is over. Uh, and so we finished, we finished going around the track twice. And then I heard in the, in the earpiece, we're like, okay, we got, we got the shot. We're done. And Mario said, uh, I want to take it around again. Cause he loves driving cars. Oh, so right. we went around the track just again, because you know, how often does he get a chance to go around the track that fast? It might it, it doesn't happen every day for him because he's not Absolutely. doing that as a right. career. So I think someone he had an opportunity to make a commercial and do this, and he's just like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again because I this is what I do and I love it. And so I got to go around again with him, and he he was <sighs> really awesome, amazing what guy, incredible. Experience. So skydiving is the answer. Okay, wow, <laughs> with Mario and Shreddy, I take it as your tandem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, I he's think the he's instructor a... whispering in your ear. Okay, pull the parachute now. Pull Don't throw parachute. up. If you have to puke, go to left side. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh man. Okay. That Never been skydiving. Like... I don't know if I would want to do that. Well, that's your choice. So now you're now you must. I feel like you can mimic the same feeling of skydiving without the inherent death and risk yeah you can go to one of those i fly places and just float in the wind tunnel and get it's a broken rib i've fall. done that no, is it not, not the same? same i mean you're flying oh, you're, we're flying it hurts your back so bad because you're like does it really oh yeah i Whoa. never thought of that and i have a horrible thing when i sleep on like a mattress that's too soft i'm like the princess in the pee i'm like ah, there's a pee in my mattress <laughs> such a diva it. yeah it, it, it's painful it's painful but all right here's the next one would you rather Oh, oh, okay. So 
for Halloween this year. Yep. We loved the names of these. Would you rather be Juice Demon? What? <laughs> creepy Husband. Creepy Husband. Or <laughs> Pubescent Frog of Silent War. Is that right? <laughs> Pubescent frog of silent war. Oh my god, <laughs> that is insane. Well, let's start like the first one. What what is a juice demon, and why is beetle? beetle oh, juice. beetle juice. I because get it. They, yep, yep. Oh boy, no, uh, no that third one. Pube that that's insane. It's a silent. Why is it war? silent? <laughs> why is the war silent? Oh my gosh, that's yeah. I'm I'm the I'm the frog. That's it. Okay, that's easy. There, there it is. That's Josh. some Ender's Game level <laughs> pop political yeah. shit going on. I'm going to go with, uh, well, I, I'm going to go. I already am this. I'm just going to go with number two. So I'm a creepy yeah. husband. I'm just. Oh, is that you? That's you. That's me. It? It's actually me. They just Photoshop the face out. I wear the pinstripe <laughs> suit. How dare they say that, you know, Gomez is a is a creep. No way. Well, no, but it's Uncle creepy. Is the creep. No, no, it's creepy because it's spooky. Like, creepy. Oh, creepy. creepy. See, I think creepy is taking a new... Like, I'm reading creep like, hey, I'm going to come touch your leg. Like, I'm one of those creeps. Like, no, 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 no. That, like, like, creepy. It should have been like spooky husband, maybe. Uh. Yeah. Haunted husband, you know. How about creepy that? has has some <laughs> negative me too. Yeah, it has some negative words now. I'm not down with that. I'm not down with that. I'm not yeah. down with the creep. The creep yeah. Show. Okay. I guess I'm the juice demon. Yep. You will be the juice demon. Just don't say juice demon three times in a row, or else you know <laughs> you don't know what happens. All right, we got two more. Josh, would you rather live in the world of the last video game you played, ooh, or ooh. have your likeness used for a video game? Well, as you as Master yes. Chief. <laughs> what? Oh, I just saw that. That's hilarious. I was like, why is Creepy Husband in the... Oh, that's me. Oh, that's... <laughs> um, man, the, the last game I played was... Uh, I played... Because I never played any of them, so I played through all three of the Hitman series. So I just oh, wow. beat okay. Hitman. Um, that's not a good world. There's there's <laughs> bad people doing bad terrible things. things. Um, uh, have your I guess it'd be cool to have my likeness used for a video game that'd be cool um now what what kind of game would it be would it be like an rpg like what's the it would be an mmo an mmo rpg um i like it because i, I like I, it i liked i liked warcraft I'm, I'm i've i've almost decided to buy the new amazon game but i'm just like new world mm. yeah i'm like oh do i want to spend hours making axes i don't know yeah. Harvesting I will, trees. <laughs> have you played it either of you played i have it? Uh, 47 right. hours in it already. But, uh. <laughs> what do you think? Is it worth it? Um, it's a great, here's what I like about the game. I'll say what I like about it. No subscription model. Um, you don't have to pay $15 a month. It's only $40. Uh, it is a new IP with a new studio and Amazon games. So it's an exciting time to play the game. There's a lot yeah. of people playing it. Uh, the best time to play would probably be now in the next oncoming month if you want to try it. Okay. And I think with these things, it's like time will tell. You know, the king, World of Warcraft, has only recently been dethroned in the MMORPG genre by like Final Fantasy XIV. Okay. And so now we have a true third competitor rising through the ranks. Um, yeah. I've had a good time with it. Okay. Um, I've, I've had a good time. It's a great game. It is a time waster. It's a time sink. You find it's a lot of running, chopping trees, harvesting yep. lumber, harvesting yep. fibers. <laughs> <laughs> Creating, Things that you uh, can never do in the real world. You know, It's one of those games that's like, go collect two stones and one tree trunk to make this special tree trunk, which you collect with this special coal that you used a diamond and a jade to make. And then you put the jade coal and the special tree trunk together to make the axe handle of the hatchet, which you staked. <laughs> <It's, laughs> there, it there was a guy... I forget his name, but he came up with a concept and it didn't quite work, but I liked the concept of it, which was to gamify your life in the same way. So he used a lot of the game theory stuff from these games with your life so that every time you live your day, about. yeah, every time you, you live your day, you get XP and level up if you took a walk yes. or something. Yeah. Brilliant. It didn't quite work, but I think no. it, maybe it could. Huh. Like they need it. to be like an augment. Let's Pokemon Go for all of its uh, bells and whistles. Uh, really got people's butts out of the seat and got you to go walk around. Um, yep. And it's great for exercise like that. And the game has like a built-in things like you're driving. You're like, no, I'm not. It's like, yeah, you are. You're <laughs> no one. 
No one just rocks or runs 17 miles an hour. You're driving. <laughs> <laughs> yep. it Not won't if you're give Usain you the, Bolt, you know. It won't give you the point. Unless you're Usain Bolt playing Pokemon Go. I Okay. <gasps> I, I will I submit defeat to that. <laughs> All right. One more, Jonathan. All right. Final one. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Would you rather have to sing a hoedown at the end of every day <laughs> or go through an entire audition with questions only? <laughs> oh man well you know i i actually like hoedowns ryan okay. is the one that hates them um <laughs> i like them i think they're silly and fun uh go through an audition with questions only i feel like every audition i go to i just i have questions and then but I, ne I never get to read because i've used up all my time asking questions about <laughs> about the audition i'm gonna say i'm gonna say hoedown i'm gonna say hoedown fun Fabulous. Yeah. I, I love a good, good one, but I, I also like the Irish, what is it? The drinking Irish song, drinking too. song. Yeah. Big fan of that. That's a, okay. I, I love all those little rhyming games. They're, they're, I love the, the rap games too. The rap games are really fun. That's yeah. Heck yeah. Well, we've reached the end of the game. We've reached the end of the stream. Did I win? Now, yes. You oh, did. I, won. I don't know. You what won. You mean. <laughs> We're going to give you a hot dog on a pirate <laughs> ship. You're going <laughs> to. It's in the mail. It's hey, in wait, the you want to see my costume? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <gasps> Where? Whoa. Oh my gosh. That is go. the best looking chair I've ever seen. It's so 3D. Whoever painted that. <laughs> oh, there bro. he is. Because the angle there changed. Is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jonathan, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. And uh, before we wrap it up, any final thoughts you want to leave us with? Um, Just uh, uh, don't be a dick. Oh, so important. Uh, <laughs> We have another graphic. Uh, Improv yeah. Revival Show. Are you ready for a miracle? What can you tell us? This is my friend Matthew Moore. He's in that picture there. And then you, Mindy Sterling's from the Groundlings. Andy Sertig is from the Groundlings. Um, those uh, those other great people are from uh, oh, Improv Mindy. for the People. That's a, a live comedy show that we just kind of do three long form, fun, high energy scenes. And, and Matthew invites me to come play in that from time to time. So that is coming up, I believe, in October. I don't remember the date at the moment, but. Um, uh, God, what's the date? It's a Saturday in October. So if you, if you Saturday, look October 16th and prop for the people, that's it. That is it. Um, so yeah. So if you're in LA, come check that out. It's super fun. Yeah. And I might say your friend, Matthew does, he does look like Thanos. I'm just going to put it out there. And say <laughs> <he does. laughs> I'm does. getting some big Thanos vibes. He's very Thanos-y, but he's very funny too. Big Thanos energy. I love it. Well, before we do let you go, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have for the rest of this month, which is already flying by and it just began. So on Thursday, we are so honored to welcome back Brian O'Halloran from Clerks. I'm just going to jam out to you, Josh. <laughs> Next Tuesday, we have a special early show with Dale, who is the bassist from the band Seether. Also Thursday, we have Catherine Sutherland and also Nakia Brees from Power Rangers, which is going to be so much fun. We got the pink and yellow ranger. Ooh, Tuesday yeah. after, we have Nick from the band Bayside. And then we're ending our spooky month with Steve Gonzalez from Ghost Hunters and Ghost Nation. And we're very excited. Jonathan, thank you so much again. We thank super you. Do appreciate it. This has been so much thank fun. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you, you so my, much, Jonathan. My face hurts from laughing so much. <laughs> but uh, all right, guys. Until Thursday, we'll see you guys real soon. Be safe, everybody. Au revoir. Clean.